Toyota is the green line, and in terms of production, I think the, uh, they are at par with General Motors last year, will probably surpass General Motors as the number one auto manufacturer uh, in the world this year. Their uh, net income uh, is quite a bit higher than the other auto companies to the left. And to the right, their market share is close to about 14% uh, this year. Their market cap is uh, 10 times that of the second, uh, the number one, number two auto manufacturer uh, in uh, the world. So they're doing pretty well. Now, what's interesting, however, is that it is quite a strange company. You would think, given all the measures of performance, that Toyota would excel in other measures. But take a look on the left-hand side. Uh, their payout ratio is very low. So from a business school point of view, they have tremendous idle cash. And from a finance perspective, that's not too good. If you look at the center, their ROIC is not that stellar. It's about par with all the other companies. So from a profitability point of view, they're okay, not spectacular. If you look on the right-hand side, this is the pay that executives receive. Of the 10 largest auto companies, they're second from the bottom. So you don't get paid that much <laughs> working for Toyota. The other interesting thing is the Toyota family only owns 2% of the entire shares. But they have tremendous influence. Now in the United States, if you only own 2%, <laughs> and shareholder value is very important, they kind of poo-poo you. Uh, but they hold tremendous influence uh, in the company and respect in the company. As you probably know, um, they have a policy of not laying off people. So in the last 15 years, when the Japanese economy uh, had fallen in the tank, their policy was no layoffs. Now, from a business school perspective, that's strange. Strange. But what a lot of people don't know is that in 1950, Toyota almost went bankrupt. And in order to have the bank loan reissued, the bank required Toyota to fire 1,500 people, which is one-fourth of the workforce. The founder of the company, Kiichiro Toyota, resisted but had no choice. So he laid off 1,500 people, one-fourth of the workforce, resigned the same year, and unfortunately passed away two years later. And Toyota has never forgotten that. And they have vowed, never again will they lay people off. And that's the history, going back to 1950. Corporate memory. That is knowledge. It's something that the Toyota family feels very important. It is in their guts that they're never going to do this again. So it's a strange company in a lot of uh, ways, uh, but an interesting company. I teach a course which is on the left-hand side called Competitive Strategy. How many of you have heard of Michael Porter? Not bad for a bunch of circle people. I thought only four people would raise your hand. Amazing. Uh, so this is a course based on his thinking, which is competitive strategy. 
very different kind of thinking uh, on the left because on the left-hand side, you try to come up with strategy by thinking outside in. What's happening in the external environment? What's happening in the industry? What are competitors doing? Depending on that, I will then set my positioning vis-a-vis -vis our competitors. That's the thinking of the left-hand side. Now let me touch a little bit on the left-hand side, uh, which is the competitive strategy framework. How many of you uh, heard of Tom Friedman's work on the world as flat? How many of, again, surprise. <laughs> I thought only four people again. <laughs> so you understand the flat world, right? Uh, globalization 3.0. You all have heard of this. This is happening outside, externally. So from a competitive strategy point of view, you have to say, okay, how are we going to deal with this external environment?